We've talked about spin axis several times on this channel, but today we are going to be taking a deeper dive on a few factors that influence it. Specifically, we'll be looking at the importance of spin axis on fastballs. But before we jump into it guys, if you enjoy the content you're seeing on this channel and you want to continue to see more of it, it'd mean a lot if you'd click that subscribe button. I'm a numbers guy, and only about 30% of the people who watch these videos are actually subscribed. So show your support by clicking the subscribe button down below. So before we can begin, what is spin axis? Since we've covered this before on the channel, I'm going to keep this part pretty brief. One of the most confusing parts about this metric is that it's called so many different things on different systems. On TrackMan, this number can be found in the column labeled spin axis, but if you're on Rapsodo, you'll find it called spin direction, or an alternative listing on the TrackMan spreadsheet is going to be tilt. All three of those things are defining the exact same thing across those different platforms. They just have a different name for it. When I first got started looking at spin axis, I had a tough time understanding where the numbers were coming from. Thinking back to the only other time I learned about a sphere revolving around some sort of axis, I thought that the spin axis was giving you a reading of the point in which each pitch is spinning around. But it's not. In my guess is, that's one of the reasons you can find this name different things in different places, because that's the first thing that comes to my mind and that can confuse some people. What we are actually measuring is 90 degrees from that point, from the direction that the pitch is spinning when viewed from the pitcher's perspective. Spin axis and spin direction are measured as time on the clock, while tilt is displayed in degrees, with zero degrees starting at the six o'clock mark on our baseball here. If we can picture an example of a fastball spinning perfectly back toward us end over end, this would give us a spin axis reading of 12 o'clock, or a 180 degree tilt. As that point shifts around, our output does as well. Another area where folks can get tripped up here is when we start to throw in minutes because there's only one clock hand here, but all that is telling you is how far in between the two hour marks each pitch is. This pitch is halfway between one and two, so we get a reading of about 130 on our spin direction or spin axis output. That should be a review for most of you who have been around this channel for a while. But if you're just starting to dig into this stuff, I'll have video links to past videos where we dive deeper into spin direction in the description down below. Reviewing the important info here, spin axis is the measure of how the ball is spinning, measured as time on the clock or in degrees, depending on what system you're looking at. But the main reason spin axis or spin direction is important is because of its effect on pitch movement. So let's dive into that a little bit. There are two main ways that you can change your spin axis. The first being the way that you grip your pitches. The main two contenders in this category are going to be your finger placement as well as the seam orientation and your wrist angle. We're not going to dive into this today, but if you're interested in seeing how pitch grips specifically affect movement, let me know in the comment section down below. The second factor is going to be your arm slot. There's a driveline article that I'll link below that talks about the amount you can alter your spin axis on your fastball without changing your arm slot, and it's not that much. So this predisposition has a major impact on the way your pitches are spinning, and it's important to understand that. Let's take a look at a quick example to really get an understanding of what this metric is measuring. You can see here on Garrett Cole's Baseball Savant page that he has a spin direction reading between 1 and 2 o'clock. If we look at one of his fastballs from last season, you will notice that this pitch has a little bit of arm side run, or movement from left to right. If we take a closer look at this and pause this pitch at release, you can see that if we drew a line right through the two points that the ball is going to be spinning around, we can physically see that this pitch's spin direction falls right between our 1 and 2 o'clock range, just like we saw on the Baseball Savant page. And that's all spin direction is. And in short, you can see its effect by the amount of movement we get here from left to right. Spin axis is important because it has a direct effect on every single pitch's movement. Let's keep digging here. Circling back to our question on why spin axis matters, it's because each pitcher has the ability to control the way that their pitches move. Here is a horizontal and vertical break movement chart. It basically tells us the amount of spin induced movement each pitch has and in what direction by taking gravity out of the equation. How is spin axis related to this? It's pretty simple. If we impose our clock back onto this chart and take a look at a fastball, you can see that when a pitch whose vertical and horizontal movement ends up right here, it's going to record a spin axis right about at the 130 mark. This is how our arm slot comes into play. A pitcher like Garrett Cole falls into this category due to his arm slot. But if we were to take a guy who throws more over the top, such as Trevor Rosenthal here, you'll see a shift in the spin axis closer to 12 o'clock, and that is reflected on his Baseball Savant page. 
The same goes for a sidearm pitcher, or a submarine guy like Tyler Rogers, whose fastball spin axis falls close to the 430 to 530 range. That's like a lefty curveball. We specifically looked at right-handed pitchers, but all you need to know is that left-handed pitchers are going to be the exact opposite, with their fastballs landing in the upper left-hand quadrant. Now, this video is specifically focusing on fastballs, but I feel like it'd be good to dive briefly into a few other pitch types for you to see exactly how this pitch characteristic affects pitch movement. Like I said earlier, I called this category grips, but that really incorporates everything from the way that the ball is physically being held, to the release thought or the way the ball is thrown. A typical right-handed curveball will have a spin axis around 7 o'clock, and as you can see in this clip of Shane Bieber, who we broke down in last week's video, you can see that this pitch moves towards the direction that our spin direction is telling us. For a slider, there are a few other factors in play here, but a true frisbee slider has a spin axis around about 9 o'clock. Then change-ups, you can see that figure a little closer to the 3 o'clock range, which is why this pitch can be described as having a little more depth than the typical fastball. This stuff really isn't rocket science. The way that our spin direction is, is the way that the pitch is going to move. I like to wrap up each video by stating my main takeaways when I'm taking a look at an athlete's arsenal. In this profession, our goal is to get guys better, and the most successful way I've found to do this is to focus on the things that each athlete can control. Making changes to an athlete's spin axis can objectively make a pitch better, or it can make a pitch worse. There are several variables that go into spin axis, that being arm slot, grip, wrist angle, or the way the pitch is being released that can all be manipulated in one way or another to create a different pitch movement profile. Figuring out what pitch movement profile is best for each guy is the real challenge. When first diving into this, I'd highly recommend hopping online and checking out a few websites that can show you the spin axis the best baseball players in the world have. Compare, contrast your guys, and see what you can take away from it. Those sites are Baseball Savant, which was mentioned here in Brooks Baseball. Would love to hear your thoughts or any of your findings in the comments down below. Thanks for tuning in to today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button. If you want to keep learning more, here's a video and a playlist that I think you'd enjoy checking out. I'll catch you in the next one.